Nigeria's private sector has been encouraged to invest in power generation to boost the country's energy capacity and promote its development. Vice President Kashim Shetima emphasized this at the inauguration of the ABBA Integrated IPP Project at Osisioma Ngwa Local Government Area, where he also praised Africsim Bank for its role in ensuring the successful completion of 188 megawatts power plant. Arise News correspondent Theophilos Agidi tells us more. 20 years after conceptualization, the Aba Integrated Power Plant by Geometric Power Group has successfully been completed to the delight of people in Abia State. At a well-attended inauguration ceremony in Osisioma Ungwa local government area, Vice President Kashim Shetima described the project as another testament to the resilience of Nigerians and commitment to excellence. I bring you glad tidings from His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu GCFR. He is mightily proud of the completion. This project bears testimony to the power of dreams. Dreams, when persisted, are capable of turning into realities. And it equally bears testament to the fact that where there is a will, there is a way. Ben Orama is a quintessential African patriot who has used his platform not for personal aggrandizement but for the advancement of the cause of the black man. We have therefore gathered to celebrate the actualization of lofty dream, the beginning of a new epoch, and the reaffirmation of our limitless abilities as a people. Certainly, the success of this power project will not just validate my unyielding belief in ABBA, but will send a clear signal to local and international investors that ABBA is open for business. Power is expected to be distributed to nine out of the 17 local governments in Abia State, known as the ring-fenced area. This project is a child of necessity, it was born 20 years ago when the desire of ABA industrialists, including the small and medium scale industries, to have additional and good quality power supply and our desire to contribute our quota towards increasing power supply in the nation converged. We have built a 27 kilometer gas pipeline from Imo River to this power plant and built the gas infrastructure to support the supply of reliable gas to the plant. To date, we've spent, invested approximately $800 million. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this power project is now completed. This will create a, a very huge value in the media community and of course also will create energy into the national grid that will be utilized elsewhere in the country. We're happy to be here. We'll do everything possible to guarantee gas supply to this plant. For some Abia residents, the completion of the long-awaited project will boost socio-economic activities in the manufacturing orb. The joy in our heart, everybody is happy for us to have this type of project in Abia. We are praying that this project will continue to exist. And we pray that everything that comes here will be very profitable for them and all the people out there will profit from it. If you want to wait anything, they will say that will no, no light. So, if you bring this light, you will help everybody and you will bring development for this town. People will be happy. Business will move on. From Awaza in Ukwa, West Local Government Area of Abia State, gas will be transmitted to the power station in Osisioma, where it will be used to generate power that will drive the commerce in Abia State. Theophilus Agidi, Arise News. Well, joining us now on the show is Dr. Sam Amadi, former chairman, chief executive officer, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC. Good morning, Dr. Amadi, and welcome to the morning show. All right. Thank you. Good morning. 
Well, Dr. Madi, you would agree that it was a great day in Aba, Abia State, where um, the launch of the power project um, happened. And a number of people, and so many things have been going around. Finally, we're going to get um, power, regular power supply in the state and in, 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 in neighboring states as well. Game changer in power in Nigeria. Other states might decide to follow suit or even um, the federal, at federal government level would um, borrow relief from there. It's a 20-year journey. One of of which you've been, you know, quite very aware of, and in some instances even been a part of it, and given your opinion on this, on this, what would you say are some of the benefit areas of this power plant being launched, and of course some of the challenges or some of the key success factors, if I could put it that way, of this um, power plant giving the dividends to the people of Aba and Abia State. Well, thanks. Thank you very much for having me. Again, uh, this is really a landmark event and an achievement, uh, both for Professor Barton Naji and his team, who have worked hard all these years, and of course, uh, for the people of Bar, in a way, who are also the, the if you like, the tenant and the immediate, uh, um, uh, who take the immediate benefit of this project. And Governor Oti, rightly, I mean, in his former life as a banker, was one of those who facilitated you know, we hear um, the, 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 the project facilitation uh, financing that helped BAT get this dream off. Uh, again, uh, this is something that states are doing, are planning. Uh, I was in the door recently, and uh, Obasek, a great job he's doing, uh, putting up a regulatory framework. And of course, they have their Osioma uh, power project that is now serving. Uh, some ring-faced uh, public institutions. So there, there seems to be, uh, you know, intensity among Nigerian states. Of course, uh, working with natural justice, uh, we're also working with acquire, helping acquire bomb, crossover, and all that. So many states will do this. Uh, Make it uh, tried it, uh, did a great job, put up uh, the IPORIA, Emo Power and Ratification Agency, which uh, he made me the, honor, the chairman. Uh, unfortunately, hope of them uh, truncated there, but I guess Emo will come back again. So you're going to see this uh, new awakening across the states in Nigeria. And that's the right thing to do because, uh, look, power is about 40% depending on the industry of cost of production, which means that as long as uh, power is not stable and affordable to businesses, you would have higher production costs and that would make you not competitive. Aba had great, or you still have great industry, Le leather, footwear, bags, clothing, they were selling to West Africa. Uh, but you can imagine if you are doing shoe and your cost of production is high and your quality is not that world class, you won't find any market, even in a domestic market and West African market, talkers of export. If you look at the history of um, whether it's uh, Taiwan, whether you're talking about the original Asian tigers, South Korea, Japan, and the idea of industrial policy, it's two components are important. Learning by doing, that the creativity you nurture, as well as helping with you know, uh, infrastructure, especially power in today's world, and of course, uh, uh, road and all that. So I, I think about, it's about getting it right with the vision that OT has. The thing to do is to ensure that this uh, 181 megawatts. I'm not too sure whether it can it can give all the nine local governments, uh, the states, uh, whatever, in terms of you know the energy demand. As I buy industrialize, there will be new um, demand that will uh, will surface, and therefore you have to increase the megawatt of coming to Aba. Again, uh, with this success, uh, geometric power can keep on expanding as long as they have regular supply of gas, offtake is, uh, they, they are uh, integrated. So they're going to serve their customer. And if they keep their cost well, and if they are uh, able to satisfy customer base, then they will have good business and they will, the about industry will have light, the improvement in socioeconomic outcomes, health, education, commerce, entrepreneurship. And of course, I think this is going to be win-win for Nigeria. So great day. But again, we need to say, what are the lessons? This took too long. Why? Because this is the first time, perhaps, we had a project finance. Demon Bank came in handy at a point, uh, Africa exam, and so on and so forth. Also, uh, learning by doing, the, uh, Professor Barton even though a very distinguished, globally distinguished uh, professor of, uh, of engineering, of uh, robotics and all that, uh, has not done this before. So you, you're going to uh, allow for 
uh, errors, setbacks, mistakes. Of course, regretfully, policy-wise, there are also issues around how uh, the Nigerian government managed the policy side of it. We know that uh, he had a um, lease agreement with the federal government before privatization, and we knew that he, he wasn't caught for some time. Gas supply, not easy. So there are only all problems. Construction time lead expanded in terms of, you know, maybe a five-year project to construct how to go, go into multiple years. Financing problem not easy to get because it's a market that's getting a lot uh, now more de-risked. In the past, it was risk, risky. NEC has done a lot of work to provide uh, regulatory certainty. The government has been uh, strong on policy continuity. So with this now, if it was today, maybe BAT would have had uh, lower lead time and probably you know gone to bed with this project earlier. But these uh, errors, these uh, setbacks are now lessons for future development across the country. We, we, we do it better because hopefully we've learned from the small errors, uh, setbacks, infrastructure failure. I mean, the, 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 this is still a difficult place to do business. You're going to get the policy right. You hope that the regulatory uh, you know, uncertainty will not hit you. And then pro project management, you know, competence is very poor. Uh, infrastructure support is not there. So you can understand why it took 20 years. And nevertheless, you know, this is a testimony to resilience, to commitment, uh, and to visionary um, um, leadership uh, on, the top, on the part of Baton Daji. And for everybody who contributed, I think we deserve some compliment. But again, a lot more work needs to be done to give ABA, to give everybody 247 power. Okay, uh, Mr. Amadi, please. I, I know you want to break down this project for us. Let's get the full detail. Because there's been a lot flying around. In fact, there's even been many accusations against yourself and other people as regards this project. And I know you wouldn't want to clear the air. So let's get the full details and react to some of those, you know, accusations. Very good. I mean, first, like I said in my statement, that it's, uh, this is a day of joy. So, but unfortunately, uh, we have to make sure there's no falsehood. First, this is a project that uh, Professor Barton had started in Abuja with an experiment to do a small uh, modular power for the metropole. Uh, I'm not sure that project succeeded. Something happened, by the way, it didn't happen. And then, as an entrepreneur, a technical person, he had this agreement with the federal government to first, he got a license from NEC. NEC gave him license for the one. What, there are two projects here. One is the generation side of it, which is the geometric power, which is actually what was commissioned, I, I presume, which is the 188 megawatts, which we licensed him. Now, his business model that makes sense, which is a great idea, was to say, I would like to have this power and serve it and distribute it myself. So he had an arrangement with the federal government to run these two business units called Osisium and Ariaria, which is the commercial heart of ABA, basically. And so the idea makes sense uh, from an economic point of view that I generate my power, I sell to a constituency that can pay commercial guys who have return on investment in energy, you know, energy supply. And so they signed a lease agreement with the, with the federal government. Now, that lease agreement anticipated, it was 2005, I guess, it anticipated privatization, which was already by 2001, when the uh, National Council on Privatization issued the National Nigeria Power Policy, National Power Policy. Electricity, Nigeria electricity power policy. It was clear they go to privatize. So smartly, his lawyers they said, "Look, there should be a caveat here. If you will sell this, the Enugu Disco as part of, uh, because that those two areas are within the Enugu Disco, you know, license uh, um, uh, territory. If you're going to sell the Enugu Disco, you have to give us the first right of refusal to 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 buy." because of this asset. So it was a ring face area, which says, okay, run it as a lease. If we sell this whole platform, we give you the right to take out this. So that went on. Before I was appointed in 2000, I wasn't there. 2010, we came in. And by then, uh, Professor Patanaji, uh, 2011, 2010 actually, became minister. He was the minister when I was chairman of FNEC by December. And so he was responsible for you know, leading the privatization. Now, the story is very simple. 
the next job, I'm a regulator, and I was very clear-minded about the job. The job of a regulator is to, to bring certainty regulatory framework. So our contribution, I hear people say, oh, you sold asset. I didn't say the asset, and I, I have studied well enough about regulation that that's not my business. If I was going to sell, probably I wouldn't have privatized now. This is the one I would have privatized, because I, be, I, would have, I believe in the book I wrote in 20, 2009, titled Privatization and Public Good. The rule of law challenge. I argued clearly, using an example all over the world and scholars, that before you privatize well, you have to build the capacity, commercialization, corporatization, you know, corporate governance, so that it's always mostly done badly. So I didn't privatize, but it's a government policy. What NEC did was provide three things. One, evaluation of assets, because the, these assets are regulated, and because they are part of our regulated asset base of our discourse that we regulate, we are the ones who provide. So we did evaluation. We evaluated the whole of our bar zone, uh, that's in good uh, uh, disco territory, including the Osisioma and Ariara. So that, that the, if you're an investor, you will come and say, what's the evaluation asset? You see it, it's uh, 20 trillion, whatever it is. Two, we provided tariffs because investors are coming and say we need a tariff. So at the end of the day, that's our work. Now, the key point was that Professor Martin, that you, as a specter of an entrepreneur, also put up a bid to buy both Enugu, I think he bid for Enugu, Abuja, and Afam power plant. The maker of a businessman, none of it concerns neck, also put up a bid. When the first bid was, uh, when it was evaluated, and by the way, the evaluation was also Minister of Power, BPE, NEC as an observer, not as a participant. But I was very clear that NEC will not be part, because it can't regulate when you're already part of the transaction. So our job is to observe, take note, you know, review, and so on and so forth. When they evaluated, BATS uh, uh, consortium, made up of five eastern states who contributed about 5% you know, you know, MOU to be part of that team, which makes sense for, for, for stakeholding, they won the bid. American Force people petitioned on the ground that there was a fortuitous error of adding 330 to all their figures. Under procurement law, whenever there's allegation of Arithmetic error. Once it is consistent, you are, required, you are required to review. So they, they set up a committee chaired by the PAMSEC of Power, chair, uh, BPE, DG, NEC, myself, the consultant, CPCP, CSPC, and so on. We met there, they reviewed it, and it was clear. They said, oh, that makes sense. So when they revised it, the makers bid one. And that's how the maker became the owner of the Enugu Disco. So after that, they now called, uh, DGPP wrote to me and said, you know what? There's an error. Please cut off the two districts and reevaluate it and give it to Bad Niger. I said, that's totally corrupt and against uh, regulatory ethics. Look, you saw the asset. They, we value the whole asset. And the maker has bought it. Once that happens, then you, it's not, the regulator cannot cut off that asset because it's like a lease. Once you, sold, you sell a property with a lease, you, the lease is sold. Everything is sold to the new owner. Anyway. When we look at the matter, we decided to send a technical team that went to, the, 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 uh, to see what Pat has done. And they came with a report that, look, this guy has done a fantastic job. This can't just wait. And as a lawyer who understands administrative law very well, I said, the only solution is that even the maker has bought this legally without us, he has to allow Pat to operationalize, my exact word I use, operationalize the lease. So I wrote a letter to the CEO of a good discourse. You know what? You must allow any good uh, uh, about power to, when their power plant is ready to operationalize, meaning run that network as a lizzy, you are now the new lessor. They went to court, they went to court, uh, but to the federal government on the ground that they ought to have excised that area before selling. But of course, the argument people put across that Bart was the minister who superintended the process entirely, should have done that. When I confronted him and Onogorowa, uh, 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 who was a DJ, I said, why did you guys you know, do, you know, separate this as the, the agreement said? where they said uh, they didn't want to provoke uh, the vice president or all kinds of stories, are, but it might be true, not true, it doesn't concern me, but the point is this is an error, oversight of something, or negligence, whatever it is. There were several meetings, and each of those meetings, Nick Pusha was very clear. So finally the president called a meeting. Uh, Igbo in Lagos we went to meet Jonathan, and Jonathan had so much confidence in me and Nick, what to do. He said, look, Sam, you're going to do due process. Take over this matter. But I told him that we have to do a public hearing. Also hear from the customers in Abba, 
That's the thing a regulator does. It's public hearing. So I said, NEC is going to do, NEC agreed, publish, that they're going to do a public hearing on a particular day. Get both a make up for and uh, bad and the customers and our bad to hear and take a decision that will be in the interest of customers and power supply. The Attorney General of the Federation wrote to me and said, he can't do that, the matter is in court, and will hands off. So when the new government came in, they, they asked me, the VP called a meeting and asked me, what's the next position? NEC met, technical team, and said, the answer to this problem is very simple. Notwithstanding what they call to decide, a medical force should allow bad energy to operationalize the lease and develop and serve power. Simple. So we took that report, gave it to the vice president. Again, they called a meeting with the vice president's office, Ladi uh, Peku led uh, bad energy, and so on else, and uh, the demolized and led somebody else for a good discussion with Ken Daman, I guess. I, I, I think so. And myself. And I made a presentation to the VP, and the VP said, that's the right position. Anyway, to cut it short, today, that my position was what has been upheld. It was difficult to be done. At the end, and by the way, a maker for never met me on this matter any day, but personally. The only meeting we had with a maker for was only with Mr. Uh, Papamsek Egale. We had a maker for said, we met with both, both sides. He said, I'm a businessman. If they pay me, they take the place. Of course, the only meeting I met was with Bart Naji and, Prof and uh, uh, Pascal Dozier, which my uncle, my senior uncle in my office, and I told him the same story, that look, this is what I think is the regulatory answer. The last time I also met with, so I've never met a Mekofo. for, again, uh, so-called uh, relationship between a Mekofo for and Anyam. Anyam never, never one so, day so, 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 uh, spoke to me about this part. Because he couldn't, he couldn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mm -hmm. Because there's been a big controversy. People are mentioning you in all of this. So why is your name constantly coming up in all of this? Is it a smear campaign or something? What we don't know what. It I is. think it's both. Two things. No, no. Let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you what it is. When I was neck, I, I was controversial for being fiercely independent. I fought five all the ministers. I fought them and I won. That's why I like Jonathan. Jonathan, I always write my report. Jonathan will look at the report and say, Sam is correct. I'll give an example. We fought over headquarter building. They want to take it from us. The president reviewed it. We won. So it is two things. One, I've always boasted that I did everything right. Eight years, nobody has issued one query. No police, no EFCC, no uh, uh, National Assembly. And by the way, when I was about to leave, the raised accusation that I was paying myself one billion. They went to Senate, the National Assembly, they wrote and said, after investigation for three weeks, I've left office, they wrote back and said, Sam did nothing. The Minister of Fashola wrote to the President and said, we did everything right. I challenge any Nigerian, I, I will walk to prison by myself. If there's any fact linking me with any fraud, any misdirection for anybody, I benefited nobody. All right. Because I end, I, so, so it's a case of smear campaign and also anger. Some people made mistake in the process and they want the regulator to, to help them get back what they didn't get. And I said, you can't do that. We have to follow due process. So I put a challenge to all Nigerians. If you can raise any facts linking me to anything criminal or illegal in my five years of tenure, I will voluntarily enter into prison. I'm a Ghani Farwemi trained person. And Chief Ghani told me that you must do everything for public interest and for truth. So I'm open for probe, uh -huh. for accusation. Let there be counterfact. I say, right. Freedom Information Act, go to NEC and look at the records. Okay. Everything I said is correct. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Amadi, for setting the record straight and putting yourself out there like that. I'm sure anyone who's willing will take up that challenge. But let's talk about the um, ABA Geometric uh, Independent Power Plant. So it's one thing to generate. Generation mm -hmm. of power is one. But the other, I mean, I mean, the other factors, because we saw in that video where we had excited members of the community saying that, oh, they cannot wait for them to begin to see power 
power, you know, regular power supply. But there's, there's still a bit of more work to be done in terms of transmission and distribution. Absolutely. And a few other things that must come into um, some critical success factors, like I'd mentioned earlier on, gas supply, the power purchasing agreement, PPA. Um, we have the legacy debt and tariffs. So I'd like you to touch on, all, on these things and just to set mm -hmm. a realistic, if possible, timeline mm -hmm. when we begin to see this power, this much anticipated and look forward to um, constant power supply, especially in this potential industrial area, industrial hub of Nigeria. I think the good thing about the uh, about power project, uh, integrated power project, is an IPP with the distribution franchise, is that um, they have their gas sorted out. I mean, they, they are, they are, the southeast is a gas zone, drive for the south south. So they have access to gas. Once they have that, they are guaranteed the fee stock for maybe 25 years or whatever the gas supply agreement says. Two is that you are you are you are bypassing transmission so much because look the Osisioma is generated from Osisioma you are serving Osisioma and so it's it's like step down and distribute so the, the the crisis of a long and unreliable radial transmission network where there's so much losses and the consistent collapse is minimized so this is more like an embedded this is like a, a distributed degeneration that means you you are generating and serving within an enclave that is not too far from where you're generating so they have that figured out it wouldn't be much problem again um the the key point here would be tariffs and affordability. You see, yes, ABBA has, uh, the evidence shows that Nigerian consumers are able to pay more to get more. So if they're able to supply them all their power needs and try and reduce their OPEX and CAPEX, that's the operational cost in, in terms of ensuring that they are profitable without necessarily increasing too much. The, the assumption here is if they keep the operation cost efficient, then the affordability is there. Then these business people will keep on paying. Even if you increase the tariff gradually, they keep paying because they look at the alternative cost of self-provisioning. They, they look at the fact that they have a guaranteed energy supply. So my sense would be that for now, they're going to roll out and they will have uh, good performance. But they need to begin to build capacity to reinforce what they're doing, they begin to look at change management strategy to begin to reduce the cost of business, the cost of production, which fits into a much more affordable power. I know our people, I mean, when bills start going up, people will not say, oh, they are fleecing us. And again, once power supply is from a private person, whether in UK or all over the world, it triggers resentment around tariff increase. A study was done in the UK recently. Once, if it's, if it's Red Cross, people don't mind. Oh, it's charity. If it's government, they say, well, but if it's an individual, oh, damn good thing, it's exploiting us. Somebody says, so they're going to be careful to have a tariff that's affordable, even though it should increase because the, the affordability, the payment, the, the capacity to pay is higher for business persons who need power to grow their business. But there is also a deception here that's an endless trajectory of power increase, of price increase. So I think they're going to be professional in managing. And uh, Bart Niger has put a good team. I mean, when he put up geometry, he brought some of the guys for the US. Uh, that's partly why there was an overrun of cost, because you're going to pay them more. But now he's fully established and ready to go. I think they, they will have a good team to guide them on the demand management side of it, on the cost management side of it, and also customer care. I, I see great prospect for this, but I, I don't want us to be so euphoric as say, oh, 247 in Ida State. That's not where we are right now. Where we are right now is that we're going to get the needed supply to help about industrial, you know, commercial uh, growth of the commercial sector, help residents in Aba, and maybe you know some of the local governments will have better supply. And then if the arrangement with any good disco, if, if you keep improving both the any good disco and improving this, then you get to where you're going to have you know two four seven possible two four seven power with very few disruptions for the whole of Abia State and maybe the southeast. The good thing also is that we saw the governors of southeast on so called I don't know what that means, but light up southeast. I, I presume it means that each of the states are working hard to improve their own uh, regulatory environment, transactions, uh, bring projects to drive up the supply for their state. And then states in the southwest are doing well. Of course, south-south, where, where I've done work with the governors, I uh, see greater. So this is this is like good for the economy, but that's dangerous to avoid. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Salman for clarifying things this morning.